So when, when you're pegging, you know, valuation inside of a buy sell agreement, what are some of the factors? What are some of the things that you like to see talked about inside of that agreement? Well, um, for starters, I am, I'm a big proponent of fair market value. Um, I believe that fair market value is, is fundamentally fair. Now you say, well, wait a minute, that comes with valuation discounts. Yes, it does, but those mirror the true economics of the marketplace. And uh, now what you see in some agreements though, is okay you pick an appraiser i pick an appraiser and then those two appraisers pick an appraiser and the question is who's paying for all these appraisers <laughs> well i draft it I, I i learned to draft it basically saying okay if we're going to do that the two appraisers that each side picks can agree among themselves that one of them will do it or they'll pick a third appraiser but there will be one appraisal and uh, people, you know, when, when they, when they get the bill for the appraisal, uh, they understand what I was talking about because, you know, evaluation for a, an operating company today is, I mean, on the low end, $7,500 and there's not many of those. They're more, you know, for a typical, uh, family owned business somewhere between 10 and $15,000 for, for a business appraisal today. That's any good. Right. You know, now you can go on the internet and they'll tell you, they can sell you a, an appraisal for, you know, three ninety five, <laughs> but I, it's going to be worth what you paid for it. Yeah. Agreed. I, I like, I like Paul's approach um, with the three, two picking one. My, my preference, and I think Paul's is as well, is that is to have it appraised today by somebody you know and trust and have that person continue to do it. That, so that is you, my favorite approach. So You're that right. you've established value, you've established the firm, and if something happens to me, my lovely bride knows it's in good hands, the appraiser's working for everybody, they've done it before, yada, yada, yada. And that way everybody gets to know the players. And it's all spelled out. Well, you know, clients a lot of times will push back mm -hmm. on how, why do we need to appraise it now? And of course, you've got the original objection, which is how can somebody come in here and tell me and know more about my business and its worth than I do? And I say, well, it's because you're not in the business of appraising and you don't have the training you know, mo I found, I have found that very, very few business owners have any real idea about what their business interest is truly worth. They have, they either have some pie in the sky thought about it, or they undershoot it by a good ways. Yeah. And I've had clients on both ends of that spectrum. So mm -hmm. get it appraised and then... I, I tell, and, and when clients wanted to balk about paying for an appraisal, I said, I said, if we get a good appraisal, I said, this is the most valuable management tool you will ever get because it will identify your competitors. It will talk about, it will talk about trends in your industry. It will talk about trends locally in the economy nationally, uh, th there's an awful lot that these people can interpret your numbers and really get underneath them. Because a good business appraiser, the first thing they're gonna do is get command of the numbers. I remember one appraisal in a buy-sell agreement. The appraiser, we weren't in the meeting an hour yet, and the appraiser had already treed the accountant in an audited financial statement of having to make a, a mid-seven-figure adjustment to EBITDA. 
And it was all because of the persistent questions that the appraiser kept asking that they couldn't answer. Wow. And the CPA couldn't answer him either. And he was, he was the audit partner. So that's why, that's why it is just mission critical to, to have a good appraisal. And if I was personally in business, you know, if I was in a business that required appraisal, uh, I would certainly do that and maintain it every year. It's almost like an ESOP. Now, ESOP has to have an appraisal every year. Every year, right. So, you know, and, and the clients that I had that had ESOPs didn't mind it. They, they yeah. didn't mind it because, because this was work that was ongoing. It was just like the accountants doing the audit or the review work. Uh, it, was, it was just part of the routine. Love it. You know, it's, it's interesting, you know, some of the points that you bring up the fact that the buy sell agreement really is also market research. I think that's such a great point that is often overlooked. And, you know, as I'm working with a lot of the family owned businesses today, we're talking about strategy and we're, you know, what is your go to market strategy and what are you doing? And, you know, part of that, you know, really good work comes from understanding your competition at a level that they don't understand themselves and looking for all the services of where your competition is really good. And when you map that out and can look at it, all of a sudden it might show this blank space, you know, the, that blue ocean strategy just appears because here's where every, all of my comp competitors are and here's where they're really good, but just utilizing, you know, you have to get a, you know, an evaluation anyways, utilizing that information and having a third party bring that to you is pretty powerful. Thank you. Well, it is, and it's a bonus because every, you see, everybody thinks they're paying for the number, but that's not the value of a business appraisal. Yeah, it's so much more than that. Agreed.